Josh, welcome to my shop in Las Vegas, Nevada. Last year I posted a video of uh, gun concealment trays. There were two trays and they opened laterally by use of a gear and some racks and a piston with an arm that actuated one door and it opened, opened both trays. Um, at that time I was of the opinion that it would probably create a high boy cabinet and incorporate those trays into the upper portion of that cabinet. And after several months of having to move that item around my shop and get it out of the way while I was doing other things, I finally decided to go ahead and, and finish the cabinet uh, for that particular set of trays. And this is what I ended up with. So it is a high boy cabinet. We've got drawers below, drawers above, and some doors that have access to a couple shelves in there. Now the gun concealment trays are located in this portion of the cabinet behind this uh, piece of hardboard. In the event that I ever have a failure in any of the, of, uh, the mechanics of the device, um, this shelf comes out, this shelf comes out, uh, you can remove the drawers and then if you remove the perimeter screws around the hardboard, that comes out and it gives you access to all the mechanics of the, in the cabinetry in the event there was ever a failure. But I've basically opened and closed this cabinet thousands of times and it's holding up well and I have no failures to report. As far as how the cabinet works, there's a, a throttle cable that activates the latch in the mechanism, but it's channeled down into the under the lower cabinet and above the top drawer is a lever that when it's pulled it deploys the trays and gives you access to the concealed compartment. The construction is mostly solid oak. Um, the side panels that are inset and these panels are also their quarter inch oak. I use a lot of quarter inch oak in the, in the panel construction so it keeps the total weight of the item down rather than having a full uh, solid oak cabinet, but it's still quite a heavy cabinet and you can see it's, it's a fairly tall cabinet. The trays themselves are located behind doors that are magnetically latched, closed, on the sides of the cabinet, one on each side of the cabinet. And when the lever is pulled, the trays deployed, they kick the doors open and the, and the trays expand. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and I'll activate the trays and, uh, and then I'll show you from there what we've done with the inside of those, those consuming uh, trays. So again, the latch is just a lever underneath the top of the base cabinet and when it's activated it allows my um, uh, trays to deploy. Now on this tray here I have a pack with gun case foam but it's not cut out for any weapons yet because I'm not sure what is going to go into there. I started with backing it with quarter inch gun case foam and then a block of two inch foam placed on top of that and that's in the event where I make cutouts for weapons or magazines or uh, knives whatever it is I want to populate this tray with I always have a gun case foam backing so that any of my items are not resting directly on the wood. And put some additional lighting on this because my <laughs> my black AR tends to uh, blend in with the gun case foam, same color, and you can't see it on the video. So I've added about a thousand watts of light here so we can actually see the, the profile of the weapon, my magazine storage, and how it's held in place by a, a strip of Velcro here that ensures that the weapon stays in place while it's uh, being deployed or stored in the cabinet. Now these pockets are deep enough. I have two 30 round mags here and I've got room for another two 30 round mags up there. Uh, the way I applied the foam is uh, I used a contact adhesive. My first layer was, like, like I mentioned before, was a quarter inch layer of uh, gun case foam and then this is two inch gun case foam that's glued on top of that after I cut this profile. And the way I did that profile was I just laid my weapon uh, on top of this foam and then carefully traced uh, with a sharpie and then I have a, a wire uh, a foam cutter. Uh, it uses a computer power supply. I think it's five volts to run 
power through the wire and it gets hot and it allows me to cut this profile fairly accurately and, uh, and it did a nice job. Um, and so once that was done, uh, again, uh, uh, contact adhesive, quarter inch foam, and then contact adhesive on the two inch foam, placed it all in place, applied my Velcro, and now my weapon is secure when it's deployed or when it's being stored in the cabinet. Here's the door, and the way this operates is on the side of the tray itself, I in embedded a one inch rare earth magnet, and then on the door itself, a steel washer uh, that provides positive closing. I did that for both sides of the cabinet. So this cabinet is essentially done. I've got a little bit of final sanding to do, and I'll, uh, I'm not going to stain it, but I will coat it with uh, several coats of uh, nitrocellulose lacquer. Uh, I do that in my own shop. I'll spray it. And then this item will be ready to move into my home and, and put to use. Now I am working on another uh, concealment project, and it also involves my AR. And what I want for that is I want a bureau or a chest of drawers style cabinet where uh, my weapon rises out of the back portion of the, of the top of that unit. So what I'll do now is I'll shut off the camera, I'm going to set it up in another direction, and I'll give you a sneak peek of what's to come. So this is my latest project. As I said, I want a cabinet, chest of drawers, or a bureau. And on the back side of the bureau, I want my weapon to rise out of the back of the, of the top of that. And so this is... Uh, the lifting unit that I've created. This is my gun concealment tray. Uh, it's got a perimeter uh, that ensures that uh, my three-quarter inch backer board remains flat. Um, I do have a latching mechanism here. I've got two 250M gas shocks that operate my lifting arms and then there's also between the two help uh, arms is a helper spring which gives me a little more lift um, uh, depending on how much weight I need to put in this tray. The latch itself is activated by a throttle cable which will be located uh, to a lever somewhere in the cabinet once the cabinet is uh, built. But the way it operates is it will rise the tray out of the back of the cabinet and my latching mechanism uh, is similar to uh, my rising coffee table challenge latches that I use there. It's a, just a simple interior door latch. I modified it quite a bit, mounted it in its own block, and then uh, um, I secured a throttle cable to it to activate it. Uh, underneath this plate is the striker plate that engages the latch, and it keeps it very securely latched uh, and in the position I want it. If this were to get heavy, I can increase the strength of my helper spring here, or if it, for some reason it tends to get light, I can decrease this spring. Um, with these size gas shocks and the pivot points mounted onto the arms this close to the pivot point of the arm, um, even though these are giving, what, 65 pounds of pressure, uh, it's significantly reduced by the time it gets out here to the lifting points. The lifting points themselves, I've got a piece of eighth inch uh, flat iron, and then mounted to that are some small uh, roller bearings, and then they ride on some thin aluminum strips on the back side of the shelf, so that the bearing's riding uh, on, on a metal uh, instead of uh, onto the wood itself. As far as what's controlling uh, the tray, I've got full open drawer slides on the side and they work nicely, they're smooth, and they gave me the amount of travel I needed uh, to clear the tabletop of the eventual cabinet. So, when I have a cabinet for this item, I'll post another video and tell it and go out in your shop, make some sawdust.